All right, the regular season is over for the New York Knicks. On Sunday, the Knickerbockers picked up their 50th win of the season as they knocked off the Chicago Bulls 120-119 to in overtime at the Garden. We are going to talk some Knicks hoops, and we're going to look ahead to the playoffs, and we're going to do it with SNY Knicks insider Ian Begley, who joins me now. Ian, how's it going? Are you in playoff mode already? What's up, Dexter? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm locked in. <laughs> Let's get through Wednesday. Let's get to game one. I'm ready to go. All right, I like it. Ian's in playoff mode. I'm in playoff mode, but it's been a long season. We know that. And, Ian, this was a season for the Knicks with a lot of injuries and uncertainty, yet the team finishes with the second-best record in the Eastern Conference this season. They win 50 games for the first time since the 2012-2013 season. What do you make of what the Knicks accomplished this year, and how do you evaluate the current culture of the franchise moving forward? A big accomplishment. You go from last year, 47 wins. You kind of sneak up on people this year. Everybody knows you're coming. You deal with the injuries that you mentioned, Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, on down the line. And here you are, 50 wins, number two seed. So you're improving your win total year over year. You're dealing with adversity. This was a very good regular season for the New York Knicks. And I think they're set up well for the future because of the head of the snake, Jalen Brunson, just playing incredibly well and seeming to take his game to a higher level this year than it was last year. Um, he's been great. They have good players around him. So I think they're set up well to do something here to build off of this foundation, whether that's a trade in the future, who knows. But th so far, it's been uh, a very good job, I think, by Leon Rose and his group to get them to where they are today. Yeah, foundation seems strong with the Knickerbockers right now. You mentioned Jalen Brunson, Ian, in the finale. He delivered another 40-point game. Considering that the point guard, Jalen Brunson, led the Knicks to the two-seed in the East, should Brunson now strongly be considered for first-team All-NBA? I think he's got to be right there. He has to be right there. I, you know, whether he makes it or not, I think second team is a lock. Um, but whether he sneaks into first team, I, I'm not sure how, how the voting will break down. But he's got to be in the conversation because of how he finished the season, how he helped carry this group without Julius Randle, without OG and Anobi for such a long stretch. Uh, they did well. They more than tread water without those guys. And, and here they are, uh, second seed in the East. So he certainly should be in the conversation, would be stunned if he wasn't second team. And I think he also deserves to be in that MVP conversation to get votes for that award because of the year he's had. Yeah, got to think that he might be in the top five in terms of voting for MVP. We'll see how that all plays out. So, Ian, with the two seed, the Knicks will play the winner of the Sixers versus the Heat in the playing tournament. Those two teams play on Wednesday night. Which team, the Sixers or the Heat, do you think are the better matchup for the Knickerbockers in the first round of the playoffs? Yeah, I think if you caught the Knicks in an honest moment, they would want to play Miami. You know, Philly... Back with Joel Embiid, you know, Tyrese Maxey, a lot to handle. And they have some players with really good wig span that could make life difficult for Jalen Brunson. So I think that's a tough matchup for the Knicks. Miami also a difficult matchup, but I think a level below where Philadelphia is right now just because of the Joel Embiid factor. Obviously, you never want to count the heat out of anything based on what they did last season. But this team feels a little bit different. Uh, obviously, you have Tyler Hero healthy and playing, but you don't have Max Struess. You don't have Gabe Vincent. It's a little bit different of a group, so I would think they would want to play Miami over Philly. All right, so you think the Heat could be the better matchup for the Knickerbockers here. We'll see how that plays out. Last thing for me, Ian, we've seen a great deal of resiliency from this Knicks team during the regular season. It's a word I keep coming back to. How do you think the experience of constantly battling back can help them in the postseason? And do you think this is a team that has what it takes to make a deep playoff run? Yeah, I think if healthy, they do. And I think the health of OG and Obi is a big factor there because he just he brings so much to them. Obviously, defensively, you saw it on Sunday, him guarding DeMar DeRozan, and he also makes them different offensively. So if he's healthy, uh, I think they can make a significant run here. It obviously, it goes without saying, though, Philly is tough in the first round and then you know, you avoided Boston in the second round, which was good by finishing top two, but you're still going to have a, a formidable opponent there. So nothing is a given, but I think they've put themselves in position to have some success in the postseason. Yeah, Knicks in a good position with the two seed in the East. They will have home court advantage in the first two rounds of the playoffs. We'll see how far they can go. All that will be settled in terms of their first round opponent. We'll know after Wednesday when we see the battle between the Heat and the Sixers. That is Ian Begley. Knicks 
insider for SNY in. Always get to talk some Knicks hoops with you. Get ready, get rested. Playoff stretch is coming up now, man. Likewise, Dex. Look forward to talking to you soon. Yes, sir.